Good day, good people. It is another fine day in the year of the Ascent Toon League, Dave Anomaly, the Anomaly Cars, and your United States Avenger. Welcome back to another Thursday, Brand Steel edition of the Don Rampa Hunger Games. Yes, yes, it is true. And today, you know what today is? I don't think you do know what today is, you know. It's actually. International Tiger Day? National Tiger Day? I think it's International Tiger Day. So today I thought to myself. This is not the right setup. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, thank you, people. It's another fine day in the year of the ascent. Toon Link, Dave. <laughs> the novel of the Anomaly Cars. The United States Aviator, welcome back to Dongarop Hunger Games. I don't think that's gonna be. That might be in. That, that, that might be in there. They must. Be. <laughs> Hi. I've shot this intro, and it took a second, but I realized I didn't have the right cast upload, and I was like, "Wait a minute! <laughs> this is the cast from last time." These are the pickles from last time. It is International Tiger Day today. And then I thought to myself, well, that's perfect. And then I thought to myself, that's not perfect because the simulator that has pet tigers in it is tomorrow. But I said, hey, what a wonderful kind of day. We can still celebrate tigers. So I got the people who would best, most likely own tigers, most likely to have an interaction with a tiger, or would most likely to appear on a cereal box with Tony the Tiger. And here they all are. In District 1, we have Hina. Clearly gonna be on that cereal box with Togami. Celeste, who probably, in her fantasy, owns a tiger herself with Hifumi. Probably anime, or probably wrote about one. Taka with Leon. Mondo with Sakura. And then we have some Rampa 2 people like Akane on that cereal box. Gundam, most likely, of, of, of all of the people here, most likely to have had in an interaction with the tiger. In District 6, we have Nekamaru and Peko. District 7's Crazy Yoko and Fat Togami. District 8, Sonya and Teru Teru. And then we go on a little bit further to District 9, Ultra Despair Girls. We got Masaru and Haiji. We got Hiroko and Yuta. Jotaro, Kotoko, Toko, and Genocide Jack. And as we keep on keeping on, we have Ryoma and Tinko. Sports superstars, of course. You got Gonta. Maybe Gonta higher up on the list of people who have had interaction with the tiger. And Kaito. Kurumi and Maki. Rantaro. Himiko, actually, might also be up there. You know, the, 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 the trick girl, like, I'm gonna put my head in this tiger's mouth. The great Gozu. Juzo, Munakata, Izuyoi, Mitarai Daisaku, and Izuru, and Crazy Yoko, extra large. And that's your cast of 40 today, so tell me. This is the next to last episode before Retribution. Wow. Anyway, <laughs> I just, it just clicked in my mind. And we still got five, I think, five secret achievements to hit. So tell me. Who do you got? First, second, and third. Have you ever met a tiger? Be it at a zoo? Seen one? Have you ever been in the same vicinity as a tiger, be it as a, at a zoo or like the circus? I don't even know if they really do circus stuff like that anymore. Um, where else could you have met a tiger? Some sort of wildlife sanctuary, preferably? Tell me in the comments. And your comment might appear. Because there are some fantastic comments like this one. That one. And even that one right chat. I'm excited. I hope you guys are too. I gotta make some picks. Who am I gonna pick though? Give me Jack. Give me Genocide Jack for first. Give me... We go way back, me and Maki, so give me Maki for second. And then give me Hafumi for third. I think he's gonna surprise- I think he's gonna shock the world today. I think he's gonna shock the world today. So, ladies and gentlemen, I do believe it is time to 
to get things moving, to get things rolling. I've already shot this intro. <laughs> Not this whole thing. But we do have one more thing to do. And that is... It's not, but I already actually know what I'm gonna do. It's something that I haven't done ever, ever at all. So let me introduce you guys to I know what you're thinking. That's just a dry erase marker. Well, if you you that's you're a foolish fool who does fool foolishly if you truly believe this is only a dry erase marker. Are you a fool? It is you. You are the fool. Have you ever heard of Chalk Zone? That's a throwback, most of you probably haven't. But if you have, it's about the kid with the magic chalk, he erases the, 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 the drawings and they go into the chalk world. This... Some magic dry erase marker. Sold at Target. So, lo and behold, if I were to draw, I don't know, uh, let's uh, go do that and do that and do, do that. A spoon. And then... I were to erase it, it would go into, theoretically, the dry erase dimension. However, because I live in the dry erase dimension, you didn't know that, did you? When things get erased, they kind of just flop down here, any second now. Oof. Okay, well, as I told you, the spoon. Now, I do believe there is an obvious next step to this. <laughs> As a die. Now I do wonder what would happen if I were to say erase this. Any second. Any second now. That's what it's like to live in the whiteboard dimension. I don't recommend it, it's kind of stuffy in here. Let's roll this and we'll see, first of all, how many times we're simulating, but also how many people are going on to this retribution match because it is filling up and it is filling up fast. We got ugh, another four. Four more folk are heading to the singles retribution match, and next time will be the last time we roll for retribution action. But for right now, we gotta get the show on the road with a resimulation that's not just a one time, or two times, or three times, but in fact, with also secret achievements on the line, don't forget, we haven't hit one in a while, but could happen today, especially as we go ahead and resimulate a phenomenal four time. 40 competitors. One will come out on top. Maybe. Let's go ahead, let's proceed, and let's see what unfolds as we start. <clears throat> the bloodbath. As the tributes stand on their podiums, the horns they dot sound, and the horn bearers, with your tag team championships, and your fellow horn bearers, if you would please, sound the horns. Oh yes. Mondo takes a shuckle from inside of the cornucopia. I'll never live it down. Himiko runs away and so does Ryoma. Crazy Hokurag, she gathers as many weapons as humanly possible. Gundam gets a kitchen knife. Izioi receives a trident from inside of the cornucopia. Toko shoots an arrow into Crazy Hoko Extra Large's head. You're not having a great season, Crazy Hoko Extra Large. You're not, well, I don't, I, I take that back. I do take that back. Uh, Yuta snatches a pair of size. Teru Teru smashes Celeste across the face with a brick. But Celeste shrugs off the blow. My goodness. Sakura sees a landmine stashed away in the supply. She tries to avoid it, but Daisaku, come on, my boy, charges in, tackles her into the landmine, blowing them both up. Daisaku, we gotta do better. <laughs> Tenko sets off an explosive killing way back Maki and Rantaro. Maki, we gotta do better. Kurumi finds a torn photo of Gozu within her pockets with the word friend scribbled on the back. Juzo. Seriously contemplate suicide? Don't do it, my boy. Masu also smashes that brick across Genocide Jack's face, but Jack is like, oh, foolish fool. Ifumi refuses to fall into despair. Hiroko runs away from the cornucopia. Kaito finds an ocarina 
in the cornucopia. Rantaro wanted to kill him for it, but the warm sound warms his heart. And he spares Kaito. Please, thank you. Thank you, Rantaro. Appreciate that. Even though you are dead. <laughs> I'm glad your ghost spared him. Nekamaru and Akane fight for a bag. Akane strangles Nekamaru with the straps and runs. Sonya finds a teleporter and tele to teleports her to space. Yikes. Katoko finds a kazoo inside of the cornucopia and attempts to play tremendously, but instead fails tremendously. Haiji finds a wizard rope inside of the cornucopia, puts it on. Gonta runs away with a lighter and some rope. Munakata runs away from the cornucopia. Taka decides to lend Avi a hand and kills a Komodo dragon that's loose in the arena. Thank goodness. Thank you for doing it in this simulator. Thank you so much. Leon grabs two swords, spins around rapidly on the spot, cleaving both Togamis and Mitarai. I just find it very interesting that these three are the ones who perished in the same event. Goodness gracious, Jotaro and Azura fight for a bag. Azura strangles the poor boy with the straps and he runs off. Hina was spacing out during the dice roll and wonders if it landed on a run. A one, don't worry, it did not, it did not. And Peko gets a kitchen knife. We lost quite a few and it's just the bloodbath. Ironically enough, everything is okay. As the great Gozu asks for my soundboard, and of course I'm going to grant it to him, that's the greatest Gozu. He grant I I'd give it to him, and they have an epic dance party, and you know what? It's been a hot minute. Hit him up with some invincible rainbow arrow. As Haiji plays patty cake with Katoko. Azuru throws a knife into Akane's head and that ends her existence. Izinoi offers to sell his friendship to Juzo. Himiko eats cheese puffs. Yuta and Terutero insult each other relentlessly after getting to a bloody fight. Look, Iris, I need you to. Iris, I need you to. Calm down, Iris. We're gonna go back to the. I, you, 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 you and I, we can't talk at the same time, Iris. You can't. Dino Jack spends the whole day walking around in shoes made of Lego. She is truly transcended beyond humanity. Mondo constructs a shack. Leon reminisces about season four. Hina, Gonta, Crazy Yoko all get rampaged by. I'm sorry. Chased by a rampaging Tok Tinko. Not rampaged by Tinko. That would be. That sounds bad. Celeste and Gundam want to raise the bar. Actually, they are the bar. Toko accidentally blurts out the fact that she likes Kurumi in a non platonic way. Kurumi accepts the accidental confession wholeheartedly. Kurumi, I didn't know. I had no idea. You'll love to see that. Mifumi eats some cheese puffs. Delicious. Murakata. Spin- oh, I'm sorry, he seems to be dead but it's a lie and Hiroko uses a spell to suck the intelligence out of Taka. But it fails to work because there's nothing to suck out. But that's a smart boy. He's a smart boy. But unfortunately, we lost a not so smart 12 people. 12 people have perished. And it is indeed a Claire de Lune 4. Crazy Yoko. Extra large. Sakura. Daisaku. Maki, Rentaro, Nakamaru, Sonya, Togami, Mitarai, Fat Togami, Jotaro, Akane. You hate to see it, but we are now down 12. That leaves us with 28 folks. Hina, Celeste, Fumitaka, Leon, Mondo, Gundam, Peko, Crazy Oko, Teru, Teru, Masaru, Haiji, Hiroko, Yuda, Katoko, Toko, Genocide, Jack, Ryoma, Tenko, Gonta, Kaito, Kurumi, Himiko, Gozu, Juzo, Murakata, Izayoi, and Forsaken Azuru. But who will come out on top? We got 18 more until you're saving Grace Picks. We probably won't lose that in a single day, right? Right? <laughs> maybe. Maybe not. Let's see if it happens as we click proceed and night one begins. Gundam locates an Etch-a-Sketch and creates a beautiful picture of a tiger, of course, of course. It's a masterpiece. Celeste enters Toko's mind and it was a pleasant trip. That surprises me. Taka and Juzo hold hands. Izio and Katoko exercise underneath the stars. Hiroko buys a plush of Mondo and cuddles with it. Hina. I look down there and I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm just concerned seeing so many people in a single event. Masaru and Teruteru have s'mores around the campfire. Going to eat a sandwich to fully restore his health. Leon gets distracted. Karumi. Tenko, Peko, enter a scrum debate with Himiko, Gozu, the Fumi. They argue over which jelly is the best for PB and J. Strawberry, don't at me. Ryoma finds an Etch-a-Sketch and shows Genocide Jack the portrait he made for her. Genocide Jack actually loves it, kisses him on the forehead, and doesn't stab him to pieces. Kaito watches as a new mischief of rats runs by. Kaito runs off before they get any ideas. Thank you. That's Look at that self-preservation by Kaito. You never see it from him in these games, but you know what? You'll love to see that. Izuru catches Crazy Oka with a giant box of comically placed banana peels. I believe that Crazy Oka would do that. 
Haiji confesses his love for Munakata, Munakata lovingly embraces him, accepting the confession, Juzo's gonna get you, and Yuta gets a hatchet from you guys, someone is an unknown sponsor of Yuta, and as we go on to day two, we have Haiji doing a cool skateboard trick to amuse Tinko, Hina, Himiko, Genocide Jack, Juzo, make up the Alpha Team, Hina's the confident yet dorky leader, Himiko is the explosive expert who doesn't think before she speaks, Genocide Jack is the transportation expert who thinks she knows better, and Juzo is the sharpshooter that thinks that sarcasm is a personality trait. Izzy always seems to be dead, but it's a lie. Crazy Yoko defeats Leon in a fight, but spares his life. Masu places a bomb next to the river to explode some fish, put him in solitary confinement. I think there's a version of that event that puts you in solitary confinement and gets you eliminated, but it hasn't come up. Kaito's still alive. Hiroko receives fresh food from a mysterious man dressed as a wizard. Celeste punches Yuta off of a cliff, screaming, PUNCH CLUB FOREVER! To the heavens. Punch Club forever. Togami buries Gozu for hours. Gozu thinks that he and Togami grew closer that day. Is this Togami's dead corpse <laughs> berating him? Kurumi wants to be a stepping stone for everyone else. Katoko receives a knife from an unknown sponsor. Taka ambushes Ryoma and kills him. You hate to see it. Manyo wakes up dead. That's not good for him. Not good for his health. Gundam receives clean water from an unknown sponsor. Gonta receives... I'm sorry, discover the river. He didn't get one. He didn't receive a river. You can't do that. You can't do that. Terry Terry puts on a pair of radical shades, says a one-liner, then puts on a pair of a second pair of radical shades on top of the first. His coolness levels are so high. The Munakata dies from the exposure. The Fumi drinks cactus juice and starts to hallucinate. Peko kills Azuru, then revives him as an undead minion, and Toko places a bomb next to the river to explode some fish. We lost another four. That brings us down to 24. A standard size game. What will happen after these four get their Claire de Lune? Yuta, Ryoma, Mondo, Munakata. And as we lift up the four that have perished, the 24 that remain are Hina, Celeste, Hifumi, Taka, and Leon. Gundam, Peko, Crazy Yoko, and Teru Teru, Masaru, Haiji, Hiroko. Katoko, Toko, and Genocide Jack, Tinko, Gonta, Kaito, Kurumi, and Himiko, Great Gozu, Juzo, Izayoi, and Azuru. That's your final 24. 14 until you get a saving grace pick. And you know what? It doesn't look like any of these secret achievements are hidden so far, but most of them could hit today. Will it happen? I haven't the slightest idea. But we're about to find out. Let's keep going. Let's proceed. And we'll see. That Kaito puts his trust in Celeste and allows himself to fall backwards. Celeste catches him, which we haven't seen in so long. <laughs> in so long. Kaito says to Celeste that he trusts her with his life because Celeste is like, you know what, man? You know what, bro? I got you. <laughs> you and I, we don't look like people who would get along, but we had the struggle of a lifetime to try and get our wins. I got mine. I'm rooting for you. You love to see it, Celeste. Izzyoi hesitates to go with Fumi, so Fumi blows themselves up with a grenade. You hate to see that. Katoko, Taka, and Tenko successfully ambush Juzo, Haiji, and Genocide Jack. Hina eats a turducken. Yum. I hope you can walk it off during this game. How do you get a whole turducken? My goodness. Terry Terror is an international super spy. Gundam steals Peko's first kiss. Peko washes her mouth out with muddy water, prompting Gundam to take out Peko. That is a little rude, Peko. Toko cooks her food before putting out her fire. Gozu finds the secret stash of pancakes that I hypothetically hinted at, perhaps. Kurumi and Izuru huddle together for warmth that's a little awkward. Hiroko reminisces about the year of the horizon. Himiko enjoys some mozzarella sticks with Leon. Yo, I would love some mozzarella sticks. But you know what I don't love? Gonta burning down my shop, Avi's wares and despairs. But it was an accident. So it's all good, Gonta. It's all good. No, blab no bad blood between us. Not yet, just don't do it again. Crazy Yoko loves Masaru as much as Maki loves Kaito. Oh, I never would have guessed. We'll proceed, though, to day three. Himiko questions her sanity. Kaito receives pancakes from myself. From me. Hina tends to Gundam's wound. Celeste receives a gift from a secret admirer. It's a giant stuffed bear. Someone's really out here supporting Celeste. Tinko becomes spherical. Spherical! Taka finds a slingshot, fires at a Leon with such precision that it takes him out and kills him. Toko's not funny. 
She's never been funny. She never will be funny. Toko has made me laugh, though. Gonta does a super sick kick flip but fails the landing and falls flat on his face. Katoko glares at Teruteru and says, do you want to die? Teruteru runs off. He's like, nope, <laughs> no thank you ma'am. Crazy Uncle receives a gift from a secret admirer. It's a sword, Hiroko. Receives an explosive from an unknown sponsor. Kurumi is attacked by a Komodo dragon and dies from her injuries. Why is there a Komodo dragon here in the first place? I think we all know why. I think we all know. Azu I'm sorry, Izioi receives... A gift from a secret admirer, oh god, that's repulsive. Izuru is the one who advertises Fangon to Masaru. Masaru is impressed and he actually checks it out. Support your Fangons. Gozu receives a knife from an unknown sponsor and that brings us down from 24 to, four to not, not 14. That's, that's not correct. That's not correct math. <laughs> but we did lose 7. <laughs> so it is indeed a Claire Daylune 4. Nafumi. Juzo, Haiji, Genocide Jack, Pekka, Leon, Kurumi. That brings us down to 17, unless we weren't at 24. We were, right? We were? Let's see everybody's statuses. Of course, we'll do a quick control off alive. We are indeed at 17. Uh, I thought we were still at 28. <laughs> so, as we keep going down, we have Hina, Celeste, Taka, Gundam, Crazy Yoko, Teru Teru, Masaru. Hiroko, Kotoko, Toko, Tenko with five KOs, Gonta, Kaito, Himiko, The Great Gozu, Izioi, and Izuru. Taka also has five KOs, that's what I thought I saw. They're going well this game, but will they win? KOs mean nothing right now, but what does matter is this music, because it's time to proceed. Seven more until you're saving Grace Picks. Let's go on and see what unfolds as we proceed to night three. Gundam buys a deed to a house, now we can have parties every week. Hiroko, feeling especially kind tonight, gives Teru Teru a muffin. Celeste puts on a suave top hat. How fancy. Azuru says to Toko and Hina, I have to go now, my planet needs me. Then flies away. Azuru died on the way back to his home planet. You do hate to see that, Azuru. Katoko tries to enter the secret underground casino, located in the arena, but gets turned away by the bouncer. You're too young, Katoko. You're too young. Gozu finds a sleeping bag. I'm sorry, sleeping Izioi, lying on the ground, raises his hand, waving it in front of his face, dusting off his shoulder, falling, doing a nice little shuffle before falling, punching Izioi in the face. The champ is here. Crazy Oko is plagued by a reoccurring nightmare. To build each other's trust, Kaito and Gonta do trust falls on the very first instance. Kaito steps aside and lets Gonta fall to the ground. Kaito, someone caught you and then you're like, I'm not returning the favor, Jeez Louise. Masaru has an irrational fear about Himiko after having a nightmare about her. Taka finds a stereo, presses play, plays some sick beats, and Tinko finds that stash of pancakes that I've been hinting at. We are moving on to day four. Celeste. And... Crazy Oko talk about their lives. Taka is so excited about his super weapon that will take over the arena that he wrote a song about it. Izioi, Tenko, and Gozu hold an intervention for AB's pancake addiction, but they are all entirely confused on what an intervention is. They buy pancakes for AB instead, further in enabling his addiction. This earns them all entry into the World Pancake Championship Invitational. That is the first time that that event has come up. That is something else. That is quite the development. So I gotta add all you to the list. Is it really? You're going on. Tenko, you're going on. But Gozu, you're already there. So I respect and appreciate it. Kaito, unfortunately, could not hang in those He couldn't handle the circumstances of him being in for so long, and he commits suicide. Masaru. Reminisces about season two. Gundam takes Hiroko to Suplex City. Himiko pile drives Hina into the rampaging flames of the campfire, sacrificing her to the fire gods. Gonta tells Terra Terra that he is a cardboard kind of clone of Gonta, created by Avi. I might have done that. Toko reminisces about season three, and Katoko's unknown sponsor is as near of the 39th dimension. We lost another three that brings us down to 14. After this Claire de Lune 4. Izuru. Kaito, Hina. 14, four more until you're saving Grace Picks. We stop Celeste with that one KO, Taka with five, Gundam with one, Crazy Yoko with none, Teru Teru with one, Masaru with none, Hiroko with one, Katoka with three, Toko with one, Tenko still with that beefy five, Gonto with none, 
Himiko was one, the great Gozu still alive, and so was Azioi. We still gotta keep going. We're not gonna belabor this. Four more until you should save saving Grace picks, but we gotta get there first. Will we have a day where we lose more than four? I don't know, but I'm feeling the feast soon. I'm feeling the feast soon as night four begins. Celeste tells Crazy Echo, this is great. It's just you, me, and this brick wall you built between us. Gozu wants to buy Teru Teru's gamer girl backwater. Teru Teru destroys Gozu for acting like a degenerate male. Yeah, yeah. Toko throws a Molotov at Gonto. After the fire dissipates, Toko's still perfectly fine. But what about Gonto? <laughs> Hiroko pushes uh, Izioi off of a cliff during a knife fight. You hate to see it, but you know what? Izioi got his first win of the season. He's in. He's now. He earned the tag team titles for his team. You'll love to see that. Masaru develops, uh, feels himself developing a crush for Himiko. Katoko's reflection distorts to show her true self as she pleads with what she sees. Tenko and Taka have a pulls off. Taka wins and Gundam stays awake all night. We will continue. And as I felt it, it felt like it was time for the feast and look at where it is, the feast. The cornucopia is replenished with food, weapons, memoirs from the tribute families, all the things that people love to see. Celeste decides not to go. Himiko stabs Teru Teru while his back is turned. Toko snaps Katoko's neck. Masaru finds some AV-shaped popsicles in the cornucopia. Gundam severely injures Hiroko and leaves her there to perish. Taka does the same with Gonta, and Tenko and Crazy Hiyoko steal a tandem bicycle from the cornucopia. We lost a lot. We are definitely in saving Grace Pick's range. And we are now in Crises of Fate range, I believe, because Celeste, Himiko, Taka do the torture, dan the, the torture dance while it's torturing. Crazy Yoko, and Gundam throws a pebble in anger. In a strange series of events, it causes a small landslide, killing Tinko, Masaru, and Toko. Okay! That immediately brings us down to five, doesn't it? Unless something crazy, nothing else crazy happened. I was like, are we in an event now? We lost nine. So after this, Claire de Lune 4. Gozu. Izioi. Teru Teru, Katoko, Hiroko, Gonta, Tenko, Masaru, Toko. We're gonna have to do some <laughs> some Olympic gymnastics to see who's going on to this retribution match. Uh, but I'll do that closer to the end, uh, or at the end rather. We have to see everybody's statuses. It's your final five. It's your final five, and it's between. I'm not even gonna say who it's in between yet. You already, you, we gotta first say that your picks might not have done well. Your picks might have done well though, because these are some popular characters who were in. But pick, or or no pick, it's time for your saving grace picks. We still have Celeste. Taka now with six KOs. Gundam right behind him with five. Crazy Yoko still alive and well. And now Himiko is in the fray with two KOs. Those are your final five. Who do you got? Who are going to be your saving grace picks? Pick them in the comments. Like your comment, edit your comment, comment on your comment, do whatever you have to do to your comment to make your saving grace picks known. First, second, and third. While you're doing that, go and subscribe because I think we're either nearing 4,600 or we're at 4,600, which means we're on the track to five grand. So. You made you are making your picks or have already made them, I will make mine. Give me Crazy Hiyoko for first. Crazy, right? Give me Taka for second, cause he's had a game, and then give me Himiko for third, cause she's been quiet for a hot minute. Those are my saving grace picks. Hopefully yours are not mine, because mine I won't say that mine don't typically do well. I had a good week one of these weeks with saving grace picks. But for right now, it's no Samurai Woman. Instead, Celeste, Taka, Gundam, Crazy Oko, and Himiko are all caught in the top five, and that's something that we like to call a crisis of fate. Are you ready? Let's go on. Let's proceed, and we will see. As Night 5 begins, Gundam finds a special charm that allows him to transform into a magical girl. Now it's time to fight some evil dudes. <laughs> some evil, some evil dudes. I don't know. Taka and Celeste settle their disputes 
over an intense game of rock, paper, scissors. Himiko hits Crazy Oko with some sweet chin music. Himiko kicks Crazy Oko's head clean off, and that's why I hope your picks were not the same as mine. We will proceed though, it's your final four. As we go on, it is day six. Himiko grabs a burning log and hurls it at Celeste Tim, setting it aflame and roasting Celeste alive. That's gotta feel familiar, that's gotta really feel familiar to the, the good old girl Celeste. Gundam fishes and Taka joins the Mistletoe Warriors, the group that's waging war against Mistletoe during any other month besides December. We lost two. Two girls. Two girls with, with kind of on off to the side hairdos. Look. I'm just gonna say it. It's time. It's a, it's a terrible turnabout for these two. Crazy Yoko. Celeste. And that leaves us with Gundam. Who would be fitting for this episode, actually? Taka. And Himiko. Who would also be fitting? So Taka's clearly gonna be the one to win. <laughs> they have four, five, and six kills between Himiko, Gundam, and Taka, respectively. But they are all still caught in a crisis. Faith. Who will win? Will multiple people win? Will nobody win? I don't know. Let's go on. See what unfolds. Let's proceed. And we will see. Gundam grabs a dumbbell and starts working out. Taka's unable to start a fire and sleeps without warmth. And Maki grabs Himiko by the throat. These three are still alive. And they're still alive. Himiko tries to spearfish with a trident Gundam. Wakes, I'm sorry, drives up to Maki Donald's and wants ice cream. It's good fortune for him because it works. And Taka plants some trees, you do love to see that nobody perish, but as I click proceed, nobody does- uh, mm, 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 <laughs> I don't know if this is fatal! I don't know if this is fatal, I don't think it- it might be, it might be. Gundam slices at Himiko's eyes, Himiko is now blind, Taka commits tax evasion. It was it fatal? It was not. As Himiko wakes up from a, from a non- oh no, from a long nap, Gundam accidentally blunts out the fact that he likes Taka in a non-platonic way. Taka says eel affection and kills Gundam. That's fatal. That sure is. Which means after this terrible turnabout, thank goodness for the boy. Not thank goodness that he's gone, but it, thank goodness it wasn't a arena event. Terrible turnabout boy. Gundam. He would have been a fitting victor. However, it was not his day. Third place, can't be mad at it. He's already on the retribution match, though. Maybe we'll get what maybe we'll get his retribution. I don't know. We'll see everybody's statuses. Taka seven KOs and Himiko four. It is a 1v1 between these two. And as always, when it's just two, I have to ask you who will it be? Taka. Himiko. Taka. Model student. Eye of the tiger, in fact. Could Taka win, representing the tigers all around the world? Or will the mage, Miss Himiko, come out on top, be the one and only true sorceress of the Hunger Games? It is a battle between Taka and Himiko. One will win or both will win, who knows how many will win, maybe none. But as we click proceed, Either Taka, or Himiko, or both, or neither, will win, and we will see that. Himiko again with the legs, she's got some sort of fiendish type kick, hits another sweet chin music, kicking Taka's head clean oh goodness gracious that girl's got some kick under her that leg power is ridiculous and ladies and gentlemen she wins this match officially your winner representing district 16 she may have stuck her head in a tiger's mouth before but today she is one with the beast she comes out on top the ultimate mage knows what she was doing. She knew what she was doing, and heck, she might be next to Komaru, the ultimate super kicker, sweet chin music. Himiko takes the win. She did it. I cannot, well, I can't believe it. Good on her. She had what, five KOs to her name? She did. She came in first. And while, we, while we're at it, just go ahead and bring up the winner's bracket in first place, District 16. 
Heart of a Tiger, Eye of the Tiger, in fact. Here we go. Made that bracket. First one in a hot second, now she's coming back, trying to win that title. Taka in second, Gundam in third, Celeste in fourth, Crazy Oakland in fifth, Toko in sixth, Masaru in seventh, Tenko in eighth, Gonta in ninth, Hiroko rounding off your top ten. However, not all the people from the Retribution match are in the top ten, because as we bring up the Retribution match, Taka was not there, so he is there, Gundam was there, Celeste not there, so now she has made that bracket. Crazy Oka wasn't there either, and now here she is. Now, Toko, Masaru, both already on there, you see them. Tenko, already on the winner's bracket, because you don't need no retribution. Gonta, that man is here to show the world in the retribution match already, so is Hiroko. But that means 11th place Katoko actually heads on to get a little retribution to her name. And that is the tale of this episode. Congratulations once again to Himiko. The mage wins this one. First place. Who would have thunk? We will scroll down and we will see everyone else though from top to bottom, ending off with Crazy Yoko Extra Large. At least she's already on the Retribution match. <laughs> if, if you know what, if there's anyone, and I don't want to jinx her, who I think could win that Retribution match, Crazy Yoko Extra Large, I think that she'd be that shock victor who will proceed. It started off with Toko taking out Crazy Yoko Extra Large, but it all ended with some sweet chin music from Himiko to Taka. She did the same thing to Crazy Yoko earlier, and she won the game. She knew the move to do it. Congratulations to her. We'll proceed, though. We'll see, like, Taka, he had the most KOs. Gundam, Himiko, and Tenko all had five. Everyone else had three, or less. Katoko and Leon had three. Izuru, Teru Teru, Toko had two. Akane, Celeste, and Hiroko all had one. And as we go back to the Reaping, ladies and gentlemen, this was a fun time. This was a glorious event. We had some very fun events going on here, but tomorrow we will also have some fun events. I took a little bit of time, added a couple of your suggestions. There's still so still there's still a lot of suggestions to still add to the um, to the Friday simulator, but I've added a sizable chunk, so we will see probably some some fun some fun some fun things happen tomorrow. Especially tomorrow is going to be a, a slightly larger game than usual, and then next week. <laughs> it's like the last stand matches, which is going to be also interesting. So, until then, Tune Link Day, Anomaly, your United States Navy are taking off until Friday. And I know you guys are excited for Friday because you're like, what will unfold on Fridays now? Who knows? Who knows? But I'm excited for it. Tune Link, Flight Crew. Thanks for watching.